All right, I call to order the Planning Commission for Lynchburg, uh, Wednesday, May 8th, 2019, and the first order of business is the following public hearing item. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I don't, ah, I might have the wrong thing. Sorry. I don't, I don't have the minutes on ours. So. I don't have that current agenda. Yeah. Oh, I have it. It's, it's not on my agenda. Here. Yeah. Oh, you know, I missed it. I'm sorry, it's under the line. Approval of minutes from February 27th, March 27th, and April 10th, 2019 planning commissions. So, let's take a look here. Move that we approve the minutes. Um, you want to take them separately? Then we take them separately. Yeah, I think, because I, so I missed I that, like so. One of them. Right. Of them. Yeah, of course, it'd be me. Well, you want to address your changes on your name and your uh, on your minutes? Yes, you do. Right. What changes do you want to make? This is going to add a word. That way we can read that. Okay. We left off. We can uh, go by them one by one. We'll start with the February 27th. I move to accept the February 27th uh, amendments as being written. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All right. Go ahead and vote. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, go to March 27th. I'd like to go to page 11, top of the page, first paragraph. Um, Next to the last line says Commissioner Lowe thought it might be any more expensive than dormitory. It should it should read might not be any more expensive than dormitory housing. Any other changes? We we approve with the edit. Okay. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, we'll oppose and we'll go to the April 10th. And the changes are moving except for the meetings as presented. No, we minutes as presented. A second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, so I'm we'll abstaining. I was absent there. Right. All right, so we'll move on then to the public hearing on the petition of Lynchburg Church of God trustees for conditional use permit at 428 Breezewood Drive to allow the use of an existing structure as church offices in an R3 medium density residential district. So, Tom, if you want to address that. Sure, members of the planning commission, uh, the property is zoned R3 and recommended for medium density residential uses on the city's future land use map. Uh, the property is owned by the church and in, in the same general vicinity as the church. Their proposal is to uh, allow church offices in the basement of that structure while maintaining a uh, residential use eh, kind of associated with the church on the first floor. Uh, should be very little impact uh, to the area and the planning the uh, division recommends approval of the conditional use permit. Okay, thanks. And who's here to speak on behalf of this petition? Sure, my name is Amy Seif. I'm the principal engineer with AccuPoint Surveying and Design. Uh, we're the engineering representative for the church. Um, the church has seen explosive growth over the past, I'd say, five years. Um, if any of you are familiar with this site, you can see it very well from the expressway um, and so they have currently have staff members sharing offices. Um, they do own this property. Um, it was purchased a while back. They use the top floor as residential space as an outreach. Um, currently there are, there's a handicapped family child with his family living there. Um, and um, should they move out um, anytime soon, they would like to have a missionary come in and use it for outreach when missionaries are on uh, furlough coming back to the states or other kind of housing that needs that might be within the church. 
Um, they would just like to use it for pastoral care offices and um, two or three pastors that would work there on a, I would say, semi-regular basis. Great, thanks. Um, and you, you signed your name, didn't yes. you? Yes. Great, yes. thanks. Okay, well, you can go ahead and have a seat. We'll see if there's anybody else who wants to speak in favor. We might have some more questions. Okay, so, Anyone opposed? Any time for the public to speak here. Okay, we can close the public hearing and discuss. Does anybody had any observations or any questions? It seems like very little impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seems in line. I have no problems with it. Right, and the, the main church is just southeast of this yeah. property just mm -hmm. to the right and right. below, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. I drove out and looked at it. Mm -hmm. Had no problems. Yeah. I move we accept the petition as stated. Second. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, curious. Good luck. Thanks for bringing that, and hope it all goes well. Thank you. All right. The second order of business is the following public hearing item on the petition of Lynchburg Renting LLC to rezone approximately eight acres at 710 and 714 Liesel Road from R1 low density residential and R3 medium density residential districts to R3C medium density residential district conditional and for a conditional use permit to allow the construction of 87 an 87 unit townhome development. So who's going to do that? All right, Tom. So members of Planning Commission, uh, as you stated, the petition proposes the construction of an 87 unit townhome development uh, with 157 associated parking spaces. Uh, the property is recommended for medium density uses on the city's future land use map and has been for some time. Uh, these are areas are characterized uh, by uses such as single family homes, duplexes or townhomes with densities of up to uh, 12 units per acre. Uh, the property is a little over eight acres, so that would be 96 units. Uh, so the proposed 87 units is uh, slightly below the thresholds as recommended by the comprehensive plan. Uh, the petitioner uh, did have a traffic study completed, which was reviewed by the city's uh, engineer. Uh, the study indicated that with the proposed connection to Middle Street, uh, the need for a northbound left turn lane and a uh, right turn taper going southbound uh, <coughs> slightly was above the warrants. Uh, the petitioner has voluntarily proffered to construct those improvements. Uh, stormwater management is proposed to be handled by a variety of me measures. Uh, the, the most uh, two notable would be two stormwater detention areas. Uh, the petitioner has already also voluntarily proffered to um, essentially over-detain de over stormwater in order to reduce uh, downstream traffic uh, traffic, uh, stormwater flows. Um, as the property is directly adjacent to other downhomes and is in keeping with the city's future land use map, uh, staff believes it should be uh, little to uh, no significant impact on the area with the proffers that have been voluntarily submitted. Uh, some other points of note, um, I'm sure you saw in the report that uh, this has been uh, before Council and Planning Commission on two different occasions. Different results at Planning Commission, Council ultimately denied. Uh, staff uh, over the years has, has still uh, seen this as a uh, very reasonable development of the property. Another thing just to point out, uh, we are not able to confirm at this time, but a citizen has called in and stated that there is potentially a cemetery at the rear of the property. Uh, this uh, cemetery does not show up on any surveys, deeds, USGS maps, historic resources. Uh, my understanding is is that the uh, engineer, Mr. Bill Berkeley, is going to go out and meet on site to see if they can locate that. And um, as required by state law, they will not disturb 
uh, any cemeteries. Um, so with that, the planning division does recommend approval of both the rezoning from R1 to R3 conditional and the request for conditional use permit to allow the development as townhomes. Okay, great, thank you. Who is here to speak on behalf? Uh, I am. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Members of the Planning Commission, my name is Bill Berkeley. I'm with Berkeley Howell and Associates, which is now Cardinal Survey and Design here in Lynchburg. Uh, as Tom said, this project came before you all in 2015. Two things have changed since then that, that kind of changed the complexion of the project. Uh, Mr. Gallia was able to acquire the property at 710 Leesville Road, uh, which added to the property but allows us to provide a much nicer buffer on the north side of that property as we adjoin the existing residences on Leesville Road. It also allowed us to pull the buildings forward somewhat and provide an additional stormwater management area in the rear of the property. Uh, as my understanding, or as, as I understood, the, the reason City Council voted against this in 2015 was stormwater concerns. Uh, we have now been able to, like I said, basically double the amount of stormwater management area we have, and we've volunteered to pro voluntarily proffered to increase our stormwater detention by roughly 25 percent over what we would be required to do. Uh, just not to get too deeply into the weeds, but under the 2014 stormwater management regulations that we work under on a project like this, we would be required to provide a 20 percent improvement to stormwater runoff over the existing conditions. So let's Let's say on this eight acres, we had an existing stormwater runoff of 10 CFS, and that's probably not a realistic number. But when we finish this project and provide all the impervious area that you see on there, we would only be allowed to, to discharge eight CFS. So we would already be required to provide a 20% reduction in stormwater runoff we voluntarily have proffered to provide a 25 percent reduction in stormwater runoff so uh, hopefully that will relieve anybody's concerns about stormwater and, and the effect of down, downstream areas we will be connecting to middle street uh, even though that require that's what requires the left turn lane but we've as tom said we have proffered to provide those improvements uh, so we have some recreation area shown on the, the front of the property for a tot lot for the kids that will be living here, and we've provided right much green space on this site. So hopefully you all will, will find this an acceptable plan. Excuse me. Um, my name is Bruce Gallier. Uh, I'm the developer and owner of the property. Um, as these guys have said, we've tried to do this three, this will be the third time. And uh, the first time you guys all voted for it, second time there was some oppositions. But anyhow, um, city council did ask me to do a couple of things before I brought it back, and which I did. I was fortunate enough to acquire the property at 710 Leesville Road at a, at a pretty hefty price. So I have quite a bit of, of, of money tied up into this property, trying to make it so it's pleasing to the neighborhood. Um, we like he said we we're able to give them a 50 foot buffer to the next property but that that property is an r3 and it is a duplex um, the remaining property down behind the property as well as down miller street are, are r3s there's a couple properties that are r1 there's one that's r1 that has six or eight mobile homes on it um, so we i just feel like that i pretty much exceeded what city council has has wanted me to do and uh like I said, I hope you guys will see it, that we have tried to improve it. We, we've taken your suggestions and, uh, in, in, in getting this done. And uh, like I said, I, I wish that and hope that you will vote for this uh, so we can move on. The other thing is this: these particular units that we're building, I don't know how much you guys know, but a lot of these townhomes in Lynchburg, Cornerstone, Braxton Park, all the other areas, 
they're, they're selling between 180 to 200,000, and these are going to be priced at about 150 to 180. So we'll be able to be a good market for the first-time home buyers. And that's my hopes. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all. And if you could please have a seat, we'll we might be calling you back up for some more questions. Thanks. Okay. Uh, is there anybody here to speak in favor of this petition? All right. How about uh, any opposition? Any and when the public have any opposition to this? Okay. Well. We'll go ahead and pl co close the public hearing, and we'll discuss it. And we, like I said, we might have more questions. One of the changes was Middle Street access was not part of the last petition. Mm. And it's okay if that, that you don't. I, I can't remember. I don't recall it being. Closed. I think that was a concern that either. it yeah. was forcing a lot of on off from Leesville. Yeah. yeah. Another thing was, I'm surprised we don't have anyone from down there in Lakeview Drive here to speak in opposition, because we did the last time, because of the water runoff into their backyards, they negated one of my concerns uh, by purchasing 710, so that the owner there did not have apartments looking in through their bedroom window. So they, I mean, it took away that problem altogether. Okay. No, I, I think the developer's been very uh, responsive to the issues that have been raised, you know, and he's exceeding uh, a lot of the guidelines, uh, just not meeting the guidelines, but exceeding the guidelines. The, with the water runoff, I was pleasantly surprised with the parking situation. Um, you know, without getting ahead of ourselves, I'm going to vote in, in favor of it. And just I, I wish all the developers that came in here were as responsive to to our suggestions, and that's all merely what they are, because we can't require him to do anything. But I think he's been very responsive, and I appreciate it. I like the fact that, that they have seriously addressed that water runoff issue. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, in light of all the rain we've had, it's a pretty big thing in my life right now. Um, but I think they, they've done a lot in regards to water runoff. The, uh, the turn lane, the left turn lane going north on Leesville, the, the four lanes of traffic will still be maintained. <clears throat> That's going to be somehow squeezed in there. Bill, do you want to address how that would work? Um, obviously, we haven't done the final design of the turn lane yet, but uh, I would think we would maintain the four lanes in each way and, and put a, we'll be able to to start moving the lanes to the right into the property so that the, the left turn lanes will continue as they are. I mean, the, the northbound lanes will continue as they are. Mm -hmm. The left turn lane will be where mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. southbound lanes is now, and then there'll be two southbound lanes into the property. And, uh, you know, the, one of the ways we're able to do this is I think we'll have the cooperation of the adjoining property owner to the south since Mr. Gallia developed that property too. If we need any additional right away, we can probably and I don't think we'll need very much, but we might need a little corner there to yeah. And that is not shown yet on no. that? No. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I was here for the second petition and I was not in support of it at that time. I actually spent a lot of time tromping around the woods near Lakeview looking at some of the runoff issues and I do think they've been addressed. Um, traffic was a concern then. It still is, but the difference, one big difference is that Leesville has had a stoplight improvement on the south side and they're working on one on the north side and that's already made a huge difference in traffic flow. So I think it can accommodate more. And then the last thing I always like to look at is where this fits into the big picture with zoning and the flume. And uh, the snapshot, if you look close at it, there's a lot of R1 around it, which concerns me a little bit. But then if you take a step back, the heavier use zoning is there along Leesville itself. And then the R1, the R1 starts to appear as you move away from Leesville. And that's a lot of what I think we're trying to design is these transitional zones. So I've switched over from not being supportive of this to 
being supportive of it. I think there's been a lot of substantial changes. And uh, we're always going to have issues with townhomes and duplexes being built surrounded by R1 neighborhoods. But again, we've got that transition. And we have not heard any opposition, right. which we did hear a lot in the past. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised, too. I had a question. And maybe, they, maybe we'll hear it at council <laughs> once they read about this. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question about, yeah, I was reading the minutes from 2015, and it talked about sidewalks, but I don't know what was in the past. What, what, was, what has changed about sidewalks? I was at the bottom of their minute. They mentioned issues with traffic and sidewalks. Well, they're required now. Well, yeah, yeah. They're required now. Were they required <laughs> in 2015? I mean, we probably didn't have sidewalks along Leesville Road at that time. Okay. But, but uh, as they said, they're required now, and so we've shown them. Uh, we've shown sidewalks along Middle Street right. up to the property line. Um, yeah, it, I think it'd be it'd be good to point out that the need for the left turn lane, if we weren't connecting to Middle Street, we wouldn't have to have it. The the left turn lane is for people who are turning to go through this property to get to to Middle Street and Lakeland. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> I, I like that it connects more. I think that's the. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, you know, you wouldn't want to do a, an eighty some unit residential development that there was only one way in and out. I mean, you, you need to provide that second means of ingress and egress. And I still suspect that that's changed. I, I want to say the earlier petition, Middle Street, was not mm -hmm. uh, accessible. I'm almost positive what yeah. I needed. Um, there was one concern. So. Yeah, so that's, that's a big plus. So how, how do you go about checking on the cemetery or the graves or whatever? I talked with Mrs. Noel. The lady, Mrs. Noel, lives at 805 Middle Street. I talked to her this morning. This this first I've heard of it this morning. She remembers when she was a kid playing back there and there, there being a cemetery. I, I, she thinks there may be eight or nine graves back there. And the way she remembers it, the last person buried there was in like 1832. But it was a McVeigh, I think. You know, McVeigh Street is the next street down. Uh, she has promised to, to go with me back. She said, she said there were headstones and everything there 50 years ago. But she said, nothing's there now. She said, all the headstones are gone. The only thing you're going to find is <coughs> some indentions in the ground. But she'll be happy to take me back there and show me where she remembers they were. And I mean, that's all we can do. Uh, Look for the periwinkle, right? Yeah. Look for the periwinkle. That's exactly what I told her this morning. I so said, is there any like, periwinkle back there? I when, guarantee you it's a cemetery yeah. if there is. If there's, so if you find evidence, though, what do you, what do, you do? Like, do you Well, if you, find, if you find evidence of a cemetery, you identify it as best you can. You say, okay, here's, <clears throat> it looks like we go this far, and it looks like we go this far, and we draw a square around it and say that encompasses every evidence we can find of a cemetery and, and then you, you build around it and then you you yeah it's it's way back in the back it's somewhere near where that second storm water pond oh, is okay. as, best, as best she could tell me and, and so I mean, it could be you know we can we can adjust whatever we need to adjust back there it's not where any of the buildings are oh well good okay mm -hmm. you so, well, you, you'll stay on top of that and Make sure well, I mean, yes, but if <laughs> identifying the cemetery, you know, dealing with the cemetery is, is obviously up to the private developer, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's in their best interest to locate it, fence it off, and stay away from it. And during construction, if they find anything, they know they'll have to stop. And notify the appropriate authorities and go on and so forth. So, they're, the best solution is to identify and stay away from it because it gets real messy. Is probably the wrong word. It it it, it gets um, expensive. expensive. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah. we've done that before. Messy, expensive, complicated. complicated. Yeah. So, I, I, if I can interject, uh, I was not aware of this potential cemetery but like Bill said if we do find one we'll make sure we take care of that in, in customary fashion we're not we hope we don't we can just put a fence around it or something but we're not going to do anything this 
obviously against the law, but obviously we would take care of whatever needs to be done, okay? I just want you to hear from me, all right? Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm ready to move that the uh, petition as drafted be accepted. Okay. Second. All right, so well, it's two motions. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. First would be the rezoning from R1 to R3 conditional, and then the second would be the conditional use. I'm sorry. Well, let's do first things first. I move that the rezoning as drafted be accepted. Okay. All the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. That carries. And then the second part. Someone else want to have the fun? Come on, Dave. He switched. I mean, it's no better advocate than somebody that switched. All right, I'll make, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the CUP. And since I was against it last time, I'll second it. <laughs> right, well, two seconds. So we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it carries. Uh, third time is a charm, maybe. Let's That's what so. we hope, Thank right? You very much. I Thank you. Good luck with council. Yeah. Have a good day. The both of you sign the sheet. Yes. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. Thank y'all. But I noticed that Amy didn't sign it, so if y'all want to sign it. Oh, she's got now. another sheet. Oh, okay. So there's a procedure for moving braves to go serve on court. No. Imagine. <laughs> I think it'd actually be cool to. Yeah. On the edge of the property. Yeah. And want to live on top of we it. hope there's no period with our indentations out yeah. there. Okay. Now we do have some old business to attend to, um, carry over from the last meeting, and that's the petition of Oak Link LLC to rezone 39 acres. Uh, we, they had a proffer, and so, Tom, do you want to, are you going to? Sure. So uh, since the last meeting, uh, obviously we had discussion about what would happen if that proffer was removed without uh, some assurances that the second set of polls were going to be removed since that time. Uh, Mr. Shea has forwarded me some emails and has been working with Verizon, and I believe they're actually out there working now to move the lines and remove the polls at their cost. Uh, so that removes uh, any concerns that the planning division has uh, or had, and we do recommend approval of uh, rezoning it to amend that profit. So do do should we have um, Mr. Shea? Do you want to come speak on this at all? I don't know if we have, haven't haven't really done one of these before. So, what is our normal process here? Um, I think we can. Yeah, we, the, we, the public yeah. hearing was closed. I think we're, we're, we're just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I noticed the Verizon trucks. Oh, really? Um, a few days ago, um, actually working to prepare to the new polls to receive the cable. Um, I couldn't get down link today on my way here. I had to go a different way to get here. But um, I was pleasantly surprised. And I, well, well, there it is. They're doing it. They're doing it. So, so are we. Yeah. <laughs> so when transpired? I'm just curious what happened to where they suddenly said, okay, we'll do it. No, the local engineering said it. You know, the, after the storm, the lines have always been too close to the road, but after the storm, some of those cables were on the ground, and they said they recognized the problem, and they worked pretty hard to, they're actually bringing in some really experienced crews to take this line that's full of copper inside, very heavy, and five, six, seven hundred feet from end to end with poles along the way, and they're swinging it. And in the beginning, it was like, well, we don't want to do all that. We want to bring, we want to splice it, and the cable will be eighty thousand dollars, and the labor will be this. And they ended up saying, you know, we realize that this is such a, a burden for a developer, and it's not really like we serve you, and it's not really like you've caused any of these problems that we're dealing with, and um, they. I know it sounds crazy, but we've got the right engineer, and he said, you know, we just worked a little bit harder at making it work within the guidelines so that we didn't have to turn it into a, a big event and everybody fighting over it. And 
because after our meeting, we called that afternoon, I sent an email to the engineer and said, uh, we need to get a resolution of this, can we sit down? And he said, well, actually, we're out there working on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, good, I, good I didn't mention you. it before, but I'm, I guess it's worth mentioning. We, we, we had informational meetings, and we contacted every Link Road owner from Willow Lawn to the stoplight, and all of the neighbors that have their access off of Royal Boulevard and uh, Parkland, and we had 50-some responses, and we didn't have any that were opposed. Most of them, there were a couple, one of them came and spoke last time and said, I'd really like to see those poles gone. I think everybody recognized that this, between Otter View and the stoplight in five years, because of the traffic study, they identified that there have been 14 accidents. But none of them are in that straight stretch, and it's kind of like to, to introduce something right there. You're going to create a blind spot for people leaving out of our development and trying to take a left. And so it just made sense. So we, we haven't had any opposition, and we've had the 50-some that responded are all like, we're all for it. And I think everybody recognizes that when the city, you know, when the city can have it in its budget, that something up at the light is going to be something that really is a pretty critical issue at some point. It's, it's great. I'm glad it worked out that way. You know, we, we did, um, we tabled it, and we can move forward on it now and yeah one thing i wanted to say though that there was some pretty strong public criticism of verizon at the last meeting which i didn't appreciate so kudos to them for apparently just yeah. taking care of the situation and and stepping up and i do agree separate from this petition that stoplight is a problem i was there the other day and i think four cars got through mm -hmm. when it turned green yeah, yeah. and it just needs to be it's simple, but it needs to be addressed. But that's separate. Mm -hmm. um, that's something perhaps council can pick up. So the recommended motion is on the screen with the change denial would be approved, obviously. I'll make a motion to um, recommend council approval of the petition. Second. All right, well, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? Hang on uh, just a second. second. Oh, hang on word just a second. Uh, the wording. I want to make sure I'm reading. Because what y'all just said would be in contradiction to what our intention is. Uh, would uh, it? I, I no. Said you would change denial to, to, to approval. approval. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to approve, yes. Right. So, I want to make sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. It carries, and it's a great resolution. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you came last time. Both well that ends well. That's right. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. All right. So, any other business? Any Anything we need to... Uh, we are... Uh, obviously, you know, Robin's gone. Uh, planning staff has stepped up tremendously, especially Victoria. Uh, we have hired a new planning technician that will start on the 29th of May. So we uh, don't so you can cancel the meeting until then, <laughs> the next meeting. Wait, is it May 22nd canceled? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so no meeting on May 22nd. Did you share the individual's name this time? Sure. It's uh, Eve Morgenthaler. Uh, she's currently working for Omicron Delta Kappa, which is a national honor society in uh, Lexington. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. You need a summer student intern? Huh? Did you need a summer student intern? <laughs> Why? You want to come intern for us? <laughs> 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 no, we've got students who are interested, so uh -huh. maybe when things settle down. Yeah. Tell them to give us a call. Yeah. Anybody have any other business to we'll discuss? Well, I do have one question, more of a personal nature. Do we got anything planned on uh, June 12th? It's too early to tell. Oh, okay. 
we got a dinner party. I'm trying that's in yeah. conflict with it. <laughs> That's a good point. So now that s summer's coming, so the next meeting we're going to have is in June, and I'm sure that everybody has trips planned. So we should probably try to get our our summer it. plans over Today's to you. Just to make sure we'll have a quorum. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be a good thing I'll to do here next. Take us all with you, and we can just <laughs> <laughs> next week. I won't. I'll be here you all summer. Send that to you, Tom, or you want us to wait till? I mean, I hate for you to cover it up with a bunch of, of emails about this. Oh, we got Victoria's email address. We dump it all on her. Yeah. 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 She'll get it done. Yeah. Well, that's good. Good planning. All right. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll accept that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Good job, Victoria. You made a super yeah. meeting there. Kept us all yeah. in line.